My new to me, but a very used McLaren may have made it all the way from Kansas back home to Chicago, but this car is very far from anything you should rely on. Uh, My guys, cheap McLaren's like, cluster was lit up like a uh, Christmas tree when we left on. Kansas, but after arriving back home to Chicago, it got even worse. The check engine light started flashing, indicating a catalyst damaging misfire, and a few days later, even more lights came on, this time telling me the car was in limp home mode and to bring it to the McLaren dealer to get fixed. This is by far the most expensive car I've ever bought at $79 thousand dollars and it's supposed to be one of the most expensive cars to repair and according to the internet and especially at 65,000 miles this mp4-12 c should be a complete and utter nightmare but are all the horror stories true or can a diy guy who's never touched a mclaren get by and make this car reliable again i honestly don't know now you know that I can't bring my car to a dealership to get fixed. I like to try and fix all of my cars myself and I think I know what's wrong with this McLaren. So let me show you guys what's going on. Then I'm gonna try and fix this car myself. My goal is to fix every single light on the cluster myself and then we're gonna call the McLaren dealership. Uh, it's just under eight hours of labor. To see how much they would have charged to do the exact same job. Now the flashing check engine light is our main concern. It's our main question mark as well. So we had misfires from multiple cylinders and this could be something that's kind of hard to do and something that's really hard and really expensive to fix. But before we get to that, I wanna fix something that's a little bit more apparent and obvious and it makes a noise, listen. If you hear that, it's kind of a clicking in the steering column. That is a broken clock spring. So the clock spring is for the SRS airbag system, but it also makes the communication in the steering column with the instrument cluster and various other control units. And I believe this clock spring being physically broken is the cause for many of the lights in the cluster. Okay, now since there's a chance my McLaren has major engine issues and it could be down in the shop for a while, I need to wash it from the 700 mile trip home. I'm not a fan of working on dirty cars. Now the good news is, this car sounds absolutely amazing. And I was able to find a good used clock spring. Now it comes with a weak turn signal, TS is turn signal, and it's out of a 675 LT, but it's the same part number. And this, this is what we need right here. So we're gonna scavenge this part and hope that it makes most of our problems go away. Look at how beautiful this blue is. So nice. Okay, now I have to be ultra gentle in this area, which I'll, I'll show you why here shortly, but there's a possibility that our misfire codes are because of water. Man, that is foamy. All right guys, so after about 20 minutes, this is our final product. So the entire car has been ceramic sprayed, all the trim has been restored, and it's like a completely different car. This looks so good. We even ceramic coated the headlight lenses, and it kind of brings back that crystal look. These things always fade out. All right guys, we are ready to tackle the clock spring. We have our used parts, we have tools that we think might be the tools we need. I even cleared off our tool cart so it looks nice and fancy and McLaren-y. It used to look like this with random SVT Lightning, Grand National, and who knows what else parts all over it, but not anymore. All right, first part, whenever you're working on an airbag system is to disconnect the battery. Uh, the battery on this car is somewhere in here, so we need to take apart a bunch of stuff. And it all starts with getting the junk out of the frunk, in this case. All right, it looks like there's about 50 little screws like this. They're just Phillips heads. So we're just gonna go around and loosen these. None of them are actually coming up, though. I'm gonna go ahead and say this thing's been out a few times. Okay. Is this seriously just Velcroed on? Yes, it is. This car was originally about $270,000 of, of this. All Phillips except for two four millimeter Allens. 
Make some clearing. All right, this should now come out. Oh, look at that. Not bad. Ooh, this battery is dirty. This is like a $1,500 lithium ion battery. I wonder how old it is. Oh wait, what is this? November 13. It was replaced like a year after the car was sold, probably. I wish it was newer than that, I'm not gonna lie. All right, no more power, and let's just disconnect this guy for good measure. There we go. All right, so at first I thought we had to undo a fastener to get the airbag off, but it's actually this little spring thing that we push in. Yep, there we go. And then you can see the airbag coming off. So you push it in, pull it out, and then this will spring back. And then one more on this side. There we go. And you can see how that works in there. All right, then we're gonna pop up these little orange guys for the airbag connector, like so. And then they'll easily pop up. Never do this with the battery connected, people. There we go. And this little contact there. And we have a little baby McLaren airbag. Look at this, 32% off. It's only a thousand bucks. Not bad. We're using the big Milwaukee. This should be the right one. Yep. And this is marked. You can see the little black Sharpie there. That's just to let us know when to stop turning the bolt. There we go. Let's see, is there Loctite on this guy? Oh yeah, a little factory Loctite too. All right, steering wheel coming off. All right, I'm gonna undo this clip here. And these guys are gonna stay, there we go, okay. Steering wheel is off. We are going to restore this in the next video. We're gonna do like kind of an interior refresh on this car so that will look new once again, one day. Uh, but here is our clock spring in question. And when you take one of these off, make sure the steering wheel is straight and don't, don't turn this around and forget where it was. You'd have to go 360 degrees to mess this up. So it'll only go on one way unless you turn it 360 degrees. So don't do that. All right, so before we swap this over, you'll notice that our plug is to the left and this one is at top center. So what we wanna do is reset this clock spring so we know it's in the proper orientation. So we're gonna go all the way to one side and you wanna be very gentle. And imagine we're turning the steering wheel right now. There's gonna be an end stop, the ribbon wire inside of here, which I'll show you guys once we get this off. It's gonna to start to get tight right there. You just wanna stop. So this is all the way turned to the right right now. And if we keep going, we're gonna rip that. So we know this is the end point going to the right. So now we're just gonna count our turns. One, two, three, four. So we have four and a quarter. All right, so we're gonna go back two and an eighth from this point here. So one, two, perfect. We know where this is supposed to be when the wheels are straight. And now we have reset this, so we're confident that this is in the perfect spot as well. And whenever you get a used clock spring, you're gonna wanna do this procedure, just, just be gentle. So this guy is ready. I actually just talked to the seller and he doesn't think this one actually has a weak turn signal. He thinks he might've mislabeled it. See how that stays up? Watch mine the detents broken. See, the bottom one's okay. So we're gonna swap this entire thing and we'll have fixed our turn signal issue as well. All right, so now we should be able to remove this entire assembly. And talking with Kevin, who I got this clock spring assembly from, he said there's just a little three millimeter down here. That's all we need to remove this. So we'll loosen it up. Oh, there we go. All right, so there's just some little clips in here we need to remove for the leather. There we go. Uh, then we just have this one large harness, it looks like. Undo that one. Wow. Okay, that was really, really easy to do. The only difference here is that I have a manual steering column and this car had an electronic one, so there was a switch here. So we need to swap out this black plastic housing. All right, so I found a few little screws here. So we're gonna start there and hope this thing just comes right off. I gotta say these magnetic drivers from Sonic are the absolute best. <laughs> you can see the screw here that loosened up the clamp that clamped this entire assembly to right here. That's all that holds it together. All right, so I got the screws out of the new one. We'll get rid of this guy and we'll go back together with our original, like so. Now we'll reinstall our fasteners. That's number two. Last one going in now. Cheerio. Enough shenanigans, let's plug this in. All right, now our leather boot. Looks like a bloody nightmare. All right. Got lots of good leathery clicks going on here. Our leather boot is back on. Now we should be able to just slide this jolly fellow back on. Yeah. I'm going step by step, people, in case you need to do this to your own McLaren. Comment down below if you actually drive a McLaren. Comment down below, F1 guy. I'll send you 
a free t-shirt, even though you could probably afford to buy and sell my entire operation about 5,000 times over, but you get a free t-shirt. All right, it's worn out steering wheel time, so let's feed back in our SRS harness. All right, I'll plug this guy in, click. You can see the keyway there, so this only goes on one way. There we go, slides right on. Everything should be lined up. All right, we're doing a little bit of Loctite here. That should be good. Now we're just gonna tighten this guy up. All right, the steering wheel is on. It's airbag time, and then we get to see how many lights we fix. Now, it may not actually be any. The SRS one will still definitely be on. We may need to get that cleared. Um, but if we see any reduction in lights, we know we fixed pretty much everything but the check engine light. We just have to get them cleared out uh, with an actual McLaren computer, which we will do. Okay, that's that. And now we should just be able to push this on, basically. Just like that, so we're done. I've done clock springs on like cheap cars that are, that are way harder than that. It's pretty nice. All right, let's reconnect the battery and see what we have. All right, plug this guy back in. Ooh, she's coming back to life. Hopefully fixed. Right now the car is not waking up at all. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ah, wipers. All right, we got the airbag fault. Is that it? I think that's it. Service exceeded, whatever. Yes! We still have our check engine light on and an engine system fault. Um, but we had power steering, we had a mill. Okay, now it's kind of idling down. This thing is so loud. The paddles didn't work before either. Oh, look at that. AM, we're in manual mode right now. Look at this one error message now. I think we got up to seven at its peak. And oh, also this didn't work either. And now it works. Yes. So now we can change the arrow and the drive mode and everything. And yeah, it looks like all we have here is the check engine light, which we're gonna get to, and the airbag fault, which we need cleared by a McLaren computer. Oh, and before we get into the engine, I gotta show you guys what's going on here. I removed the four screws that hold the clock spring together. And let's see some clock spring carnage, uh, if we can see it. Oh wait, yeah, look, right there, right in there. The ribbon is totally destroyed. Oh yeah, and look, and we're, there we go. Yeah, I think, I think these shocks are wearing out here, but regardless, here is our twin turbo 3.8 liter Nissan derived McLaren engine. This was some kind of Nissan race car engine at some point, I'm not sure the exact history, uh, but then it made its way into this car. And from what I understand, it is a very overall reliable and very potent engine. They're guys with a thousand horsepower in the stock engine, just with bigger turbos and tuning and whatnot. Um, but we can't even really get into that right now because of our check engine light, which at this point could be one of two issues. Could have been bad. Right now I'm taking off the side engine panels because we are gonna be replacing the ignition coils and spark plugs. I don't have any service history on them and there is a common failure with those and it's all because of th this right here. It's not sealed. So if it rains or if you wash the car and you're pressure washing around this area, you'll get water on the engine. It'll sit on the coil pack and it can corrode the spark plug lead and the very top of the spark plug and that could cause our catalyst damaging misfire. And so we definitely wanna start off with the spark plugs and coils because the other common failure point that can set those exact codes is called a driveline dampener, which is gonna require me to remove the entire back end of this car, remove the transmission. It's some pretty in-depth surgery. The part I think is a couple thousand alone. And so let's just cross our fingers that it's not that, but luckily we should know pretty quick because this thing is coating up with the check engine light and the misfire codes right away now. So I think this has gotten to the point where whatever's causing the issue is causing the issue all the time. How does this come off? Sneaky little bugger. I forgot one of the, one of the bolts. Now it should come off and now we kind of kind of move this guy out of the way. Now we should be able to get this. Oh, so close. Ah, look at that. We'll get the other side and then we'll actually be able to see this engine. Okay, there we go. No casualties yet. Right, let's pop this guy off too. There we go. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I don't, uh, I don't even see the coils. And speaking of coils, these are our new ones. They are Bosch OEM coils. 
And these are the exact same coils right here as what comes on a Nissan Sentra. Literally the part number from the McLaren engine cross references to a Nissan Sentra, which makes sense because it is kind of a Nissan engine. Uh, so we got these for $35 each. And you know what? I think this would be a great time to call the dealer because I think to do coils and plugs at the dealer is many thousands of dollars. Let's, let's find out. McLaren speaking, may I help you? Yes, I was wondering if you could give me an estimate on having two service items repaired on my McLaren. Okay, what, what are you looking to do? Uh, spark plugs and ignition coils, and then it needs a clock spring behind the steering wheel airbag. Give me a few minutes, Alex, and I'll look that up for you. Okay, great, thank you so much. Are you just looking for, are you looking for the, just the part or the uh, labor on it? Or? Oh no, just to, drop, just to drop the car off and have you guys do the whole thing. So parts, okay. parts and labor and everything. Parts and labor. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. Bye. Mm -hmm. Man, super nice guy. He's going to call me back. That was, I think, the fifth or sixth McLaren dealer I've called. I've left messages. I've waited on hold. Nothing. Absolutely no service whatsoever. I'm just trying to spend an astronomical amount of money on my car at the dealer for Nissan parts. And this is the only guy that might hopefully be telling me how much this stuff costs. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys, let's do these coils and plugs. I'm going to start off by removing the two throttle bodies. So we have to start with these tubes going to the two intercoolers. All right, there we go. Easy enough. All right, now we just have four or five millimeter Allen screws holding this guy in. I'm pretty sure we have a reusable seal here. We're gonna find out because I don't wanna have to buy any more parts for the McLaren. Although so far we're doing pretty darn good on the cost of parts. Oh, the clock spring, by the way, the entire assembly with all the levers and everything, it was 825 used, and I think that car had like 10,000 miles on it. Obviously way more than a normal car's used clock spring, but I mean, it did fix like five lights. So at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with the results of that $825. Okay, throttle body is off. Woo, look what we got. All right, so here's our throttle body. Actually looks really clean. I was planning on cleaning this out, but uh, there's really not too much to do here. And here is our reusable seal. And you can see it's in really good shape. It's still protruding out, so very nice. All that did was allow me to kind of fit my hand in here a little bit, because there's a coil somewhere down here. All right. And our cooler tube coming off on the passenger side. And we'll remove this throttle body tube. So far, so good. All right, I'm gonna screw, there we go. Let's see. This one needs a little cleaning, nothing too bad. All right, goodbye throttle body. And look at that, we can see that coil pretty well. We should just do the easiest one first. Let's get that guy out of there. All right guys, getting this connector is uh, proving to be very difficult to do. So I'm going to remove the coil and then see if we can, you know, get the connector off. The only good thing here is that there's only one bolt holding these in. So, okay, I think I've cracked it loose. All right, cool, so now the bolt is coming out. And so we may see corrosion on one of these. We're gonna find out. Oh, look at this little short guy. I do not wanna drop this. Oh my gosh. Ah, that would totally stink. This takes the Bermuda Triangle of engine compartments to a whole new level. Just look at all these tiny little places that everything can go. This looks kind of nightmarish to work on, I'm not gonna lie. All right. Put that out, let's pull this up. Our little Nissan Sentra coil. There we go. All right, let me see if I can get a better grip on this connector now. No, no, I can't, it's still really difficult. I gave it the old Vulcan death grip, yes! Yes, yes! You can kind of see a little bit of residue here, like this got wet at some point, but nothing crazy. Um, I don't really see any corrosion. Uh, let's get the spark plug out. I finally found the right socket that works. So it's a thin wall 16 and I've taped it all together with my extension so we don't lose anything. So let's see what we can figure out. Okay, now it's clicking in. I was trying a thin wall 14 because that's a possibility too. I guess some of these had 14s and some of these had 16s. Oh, this is gonna take forever. No power tools can fit in anywhere. This is going to stink. But it's turning. Oh my gosh, this is, this is the easy one. Check out the spark plug. 
I mean, this is the most threads I've ever seen in my life, especially if you compare this to the SVT Lightning. The earlier ones had four threads, which you guys know how much I dislike. Look at this, is like 50 threads. All right, I might be loose enough now to spin out if I can get the tool to release. All right, this can be a total lifesaver, and I think it's gonna work well. Oh, ho, ho. yes. This is probably gonna save me like three hours of time. Oh, all right, here we go. First plug, we got it. Oh. All right, let's see, what kind of plug do we have? We have an NGK Iridium, and my guys at Cannonball Garage recommended this NGK plug right here, which is gonna be a 14 millimeter socket. So these do have different part numbers on them, but the most important thing is they protrude out exactly the same, everything will work all right. And this looks way better than this guy here, so we don't really know how old this is. All right, first new spark plug going in. Now it's time to screw this in, about 400 threads. And so these are an eight range spark plug. So that is a pretty cold spark plug. Just as a little point of reference, this is gonna be a weird comparison, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. On the LS cars, most of the guys that are running like 600 horsepower boosted engines and many other engines, they run a six heat range. The higher the number, the colder the plug. On my 1000 horsepower turbo Trans Am, I run an eight heat range. And that's just what these come with from the factory is an eight. And it's really not that hard to get these to 1000 horsepower, like turbos, downpipes, and a tune. Some guys run methanol, thousand horsepower, stock engine. Supposedly the transes hold up as well. Just everything is just over, overbuilt. It's kind of a, it's kind of a good car. My friend Kevin at Supercar Garage Atlanta, he's got one of these with like a thousand horsepower. He's had like seven of these cars. He's actually who got me the clock spring. I'll leave their info down below. He's got some pretty cool stuff on Instagram and YouTube and whatnot. All right, that is as tight as I can get it. Ah, ah there we go, got it, okay. So I got the bottom out with this guy. It's pretty much impossible to get a torque wrench in anywhere, but that is okay because these have crush washers. You can see the old one is a little kind of smushed down and it tells you right in the box what to do here. So this is for a tapered spark plug without the crush washer. You get it to bottom out and then go 1 16th of a turn. And then if you have a crush washer like ours, you get it to bottom out and then one half turn and you're done. All right, so we're gonna have to break this up into a few eighth turns here, but that's one, two, Three, four. Okay, cool. That should be a half and we're done. All right, guys, I gotta say, these little tools from Sonic are a lifesaver. All their quarter drive stuff, all their ratchets, super fine tooth. All right, let's see if I can get this guy out. Okay, yeah, that was actually pretty easy. Let's see here, that, that is 2011 and this is a 2012 car. These are original. So far, these are all original coils. So they definitely needed to be done at 65,000 miles. So I'm going back and forth between these tools because the plugs that are in here are 16 millimeter and the new plugs are 14 millimeter 12 points. So yeah, this is what I'm working with. All right, guys, I have almost gotten this spark plug out. I think this is one of the hardest ones. And I gotta say my, my forearms, they are getting quite the workout right now. It's, I'm burning, burning up here, people. Okay, here we go. Oh, please still be attached to the socket. I can't see anything, it's all feel, and I can't even pull it out like with my arm. I just, I'm inching it out with my fingers here. Come on now, please have a spark plug. Yay, I did it! We have a spark plug! <laughs> that one is so tough. Now I just gotta switch tools. I already have it preloaded with a new spark plug. And you gotta hold, I'm holding it too, man. I don't wanna damage the plug, but also I don't wanna drop it. I don't want to drop anything. Okay, so I'm like, I got to feel around. Okay, this is getting a little weird. Let me just get this plug in here. Spark plug is in. And now it's 15 minutes of turning this by hand. All right, guys, we have our first new coil going in. I'm going to install the one underneath this aluminum bar that's welded in here first because I don't think I'll be able to get this in once I get the other coils around it. Um, yeah. Okay, I think I gotta do a little twisty turny. Can you guys see anything at all right now? Can they see anything all, no. at all, Max? No. no? No? Okay. I mean, I can move over here and <laughs> you still can't see anything. Okay, all right, all right. All right, guys, so um, yeah, just imagine the coil went in. It's very difficult for me to film any of this, but I wish I could explain to you. Uh, it's been like four hours. I'm still on one side. Granted, filming adds a little bit, but 
These are the hardest spark plugs I've ever done. That's all I got to say. You guys have seen me do a million sets of spark plugs, V12 Mercedes, all sorts of crazy stuff. These are difficult. My arms are like indented. I'm like, it's, it's brutal. But anyway, the, the coil is there. Now I'm going to put the bolt in and finagle all the other coils in. And then we're moving on to the other side. Probably after I go home and like sleep, it'll be a new day. All right, guys, I've gotten three coils off on this side. It took me about a half hour. This side is definitely worse, but I'm getting better. So it kind of equals out. I don't know. We got the last coil closest to the firewall. These are the ones that would have the rust build up because I guess the water comes in in this area. So here is the last coil I'm pulling out. That looks watery to me. The other side was fine. This definitely looks a little moist. There is a maintenance interval from McLaren uh, to replace coils, which is pretty uncommon. There's obviously spark plug intervals on everything, but it's very uncommon to hear that you actually need to replace the coils. From what I understand, it's 80,000 miles, but in talking with a few McLaren techs, some of them replace them like every 10,000 miles. It's, it's insane. And these are original from 2011, and this one's wet. Feels a little weird in here too. Huh, let's get the plug out. Okay, here we go. Plug coming out. That is the first plug on this side and probably the easiest that I'm doing. Oh yeah. Oh, she's rusty. Oh yeah, look at that. She is wet and rusty. And we were very careful when we washed the car and obviously it wouldn't have rusted over in you know one day. But yeah, look at all that. That is from water sitting in there, probably at the end of the coil as well. This thing is like really watery. So far, this is one smoking gun. Uh, now we did have multiple misfire codes, but considering how old these coils are and who knows how old the plugs are, it's very possible that they're all just kind of worn out and throwing random misfire codes every once in a while. And the fact that we filled up with premium in the middle of winter, in the middle of Iowa, probably exacerbated the situation because premium fuel just isn't used all that much, especially in the middle of rural country areas in the winter time. Uh, so it could have been really old fuel as well. So I think a good coil and plug service on this and obviously some fresh fuel and we are gonna be good. Let's see what else we got. Oh, okay. No, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> we are never gonna find that. Oh, I'm just gonna move on and pretend that didn't happen. I, I honestly, I don't even think there's any point in looking for it. In a future video though, we will have this up in the air and we're gonna take all the shields off because I wanna see if there was anything done to the turbos and the exhaust. So stay tuned for that one where we find my rusted spark plug. All right guys, this is pretty uneventful. Uh, it took me about an hour and a half to do this side, but all the coils are new and uh, we're going back together. But first I want to see what kind of air filters we have. So let's take out, I think about 19 screws to get to one side. I just got done with the 12 screws for the air filter box and I loosened up this clamp as well. Luckily the oil was already changed. It only has about 2000 miles on the oil change. So we can wait on that. McLaren calls for an oil change every 10,000 miles, which I think is insane. But then again, it's 10,000 or one year. No one's putting 10,000 miles a year on these things anyway. I can see the air filter and it looks really nice and new. It's a Fram. Okay, I can't get the tube off. All right, guys, there you go. There is a paper Fram air filter in my McLaren. It looks really clean. Uh, we aren't gonna do anything about that. It looks good. So it's got newer looking air filters. It just had an oil change. I did the coils and plugs. I think this McLaren is is gonna be good. Or it's still gonna have a check engine light with multiple misfire codes. And at that point, I have to take off the transmission to replace a driveline damper that's like $2,500 and a ton of extra labor. But we're gonna find out soon. Even though these throttle bodies are pretty clean, we're gonna clean them out even more. This guy is getting a full service. Oh, there's some, there's some stuff in there. Yeah, that's gonna look nice. That's gonna gain at least point three nine horsepower all right this guy is clean this is basically a ported and polished throttle body at this point kind of all right guys driver's side throttle body going back in i uh, lubricated our seal i have no idea what the torque spec is on this but it's not going to be high all right throttle bodies are on i'm about to put these on but they're quite dirty we're gonna make this look pretty with some mud slinger this stuff is really nice. Nothing sticks to it, but it shines up rubber and plastic under the hood really nicely. It smells so good, just like cherries. It's meant to spray on ATV and dirt bikes so that mud doesn't stick to it, mud slinger. So it works really good for anything like this that gets dirty under the hood. Look at this, wipe it off and it's a nice satin factory style finish. All right, I'll just pop this guy back on. These are very, very good quality hoses, I must say, and clamps. Good job, McLaren, for $270,000 new. 
you get some very nice silicone tubes. Okay, so we're about to start this thing up, um, but since I do suspect some bad gas, we're gonna add some of our performance improver from Amsoil. This stuff is fantastic. It's the only fuel additive I use. And so this is gonna work with port injected or direct injected engines. So it'll get the moisture out of the tank and also clean the fuel injectors, the valves, the pistons, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's Ron, Ron 1998. Maybe Ron, Ron is probably a nice guy. All right, this is done. Guys, let me know in the comment section, is Ron 98, is that equivalent to 93 octane here? Or is it 91 octane? Probably the minimum, which is like 91 is the minimum high octane fuel in the States. It's too bad we don't have these magical machines that tell us everything. What is Ron 98 equivalent to in octane? 93 is equivalent to 98. So there you go. We're supposed to put 93 octane in it which going through Kansas and Iowa and stuff, a lot of it was 90 and 91. Now here in Chicago, we got 93 in this guy now. And this, so we should be all right. Thanks, Ron, class of 98. Please speak, it may help you. Hey, Steve, my name is Alex. I think I missed your call yesterday. Uh, you were probably calling me back with a quote on the McLaren for the coils and plugs and clock spring. Well, yes, I do have a price on all the coils and plugs. Okay, so real quick, uh, the the ignition coils are uh, 2470 and the labor for both would be 1790 mm -hmm. plugs are right at 375 okay and then plus tax right <laughs> correct yes sir. okay so we're at 4600 plus tax so about five uh, about five thousand dollars and then the clock spring two thousand eighteen dollars uh, labor roughly right at 292 right at 300 yeah okay so 2500 bucks for the clock spring five thousand uh for the coils and plugs is what I got, ballpark. Okay, cool. And then um, what, do you know, what is the maintenance interval on those spark plugs and coils? Is there a- uh, Usually it's after, I think it's after five years, and depending on how many miles you have on it. How many miles are on it? Uh, 65,000. Oh, wow. So yeah, you, you would probably be due for that. Um, I'm sure they've done the uh, clutch oil and filter service on the transmission as well. They usually do that every 20,000 miles. Oh, okay. How, how much is that if it hasn't been done? Uh, if it hasn't been done, that usually runs about two grand. All right. Um, and then I guess one last thing, I know the oil change was done not too long ago, but if I, if I wanted to get the oil change done, what, what does that cost on, on this car? Um, just to do a, a, an oil change is right at about $1,000. Okay. The oil and the, uh, and the surface. Thank Great. You. Thank you. So $5,000 for the ignition coils and spark plugs. And we did them for 450, so less than 10% of the cost DIY style. And you know what's funny is that the DIY costs for ignition coils and plugs would be the same on like most cars, like a Mercedes, a run of the mill Mercedes, or even a, you know, an American car. That's just how much it would cost. The spark plugs are a little bit more expensive, but nothing crazy. Um, but the cost to get it done at the dealer at Mercedes or something like that, it might be 1500. It's 5,000 at the McLaren dealer. And guys, I've mentioned this before. I'm not, I'm not like ripping on the dealer. This is, they're getting this money. Like I'm probably not poaching any work from the dealership. Most all McLaren people are going to go to the dealership. They're going to spend the money. Uh, they want the records done at the dealer. And I get that they're paying a big premium, but if you were to buy one of these cars yourself and you wanted to work on it yourself, this is the kind of stuff you're going to run into. You can do stuff for 90% less yourself. And the clock spring, I was, I was a little surprised in the clock spring. It wasn't that bad. So 2,500 for the clock spring, I paid 825 for a used one. Um, so, you know, less than half, but not as crazy as the coils and plugs. So yeah, we got quoted $7,500 for what I did in this video for 1,275 bucks. Not bad. I can never get this. They got rid of the swipe doors, I think after this year. I'm so bad at swiping. I'm just, I just cheat. There we go. All right. Hey, no check engine lights. Yay. All right, that's gone. We just have airbags. Runs good. Yay. Can you hear anything I'm saying? It is so loud. Oh. There we go. All right, a little bit of smoke. I had some brake clean around here, just cleaning stuff up. Uh, all right, cool. Check engine light is gone. 
And look at this. All we have is the airbag. That's it. That's the only one we need like a real computer to clear out is the airbag, which we're gonna go do that. All right, but first, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall all the panels and everything, and I'll, I'll clean that up too. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. We gotta make these covers look pretty good. Oh, this stuff is so good. All right, that looks much better. Actually, kinda looks out of place now. We gotta clean the rest. This stuff, it's like, it's like a miracle. I'm gonna promise myself that I will never let any of this get dirty. It's just so easy to clean. Nice. All right, before and after and before then after. All right, let's finish these two up. All right, she is all cleaned up, ready to purr. Let's get this thing out on the road. Uh, we are definitely in the right place for a McLaren. And compared to what they have going on here at Cannonball Garage, this is like, mine is like the cheap rental car McLaren. Oh my gosh. This place impresses me every time I pull in. Look at this. Whoa. Oh. Arnie, I've brought you the cheap one. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, man? Good How you doing? You. Good to see you. All right, guys, so we have Ivan hooked up to the McLaren. And what do we have for trouble codes here? Some weird stuff. Front airbag, driver, stage one, upper threshold exceeded. Front airbag, driver, stage two, upper threshold exceeded. Okay. And no can communication. Yeah, basically, we had a bad clock spring. I don't know if Arnie told you, but mm -hmm. it was physically torn. Okay. That was it. That's when the light came on. So we put just replaced the clock spring, and yeah, that's okay. it. I've recorded the codes. I'm going to go ahead and clear the codes. And we're going to read the codes out again. We've got no codes. And it looks like uh, airbag light's probably gone. Look at that, guys. My McLaren has no warning lights on the dash. I have never seen my own car like that before. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Thanks. I appreciate it. No problem. So right now he's just scanning all of the modules because we had just disconnected the battery, which is fine for clearing some stuff out. But, well, we're going to dig a little deeper, see what we have. So we got some codes here and there. The engine control's got five. This is the intake sound generator. Do you okay. know if that had been deleted? Yes, it, it's been deleted. Yeah, there's some hoses okay. there that are disconnected. So it's then gone. That's, that would make sense. Fuel rail pressure sensor rationality check. These could be related to a disconnect on the battery. Okay. Door modules are normal, HVAC. I'm going to guess a lot of these are CAN communication. Yeah. So a lot of this may be the battery disconnect. All right, so we're blowing out all the codes. We're going to start from scratch with our 65,000 mile 12C. It's got to be one of the higher mileage non-rental car McLarens probably around. Let me know in the comments if you guys know of one with more miles that hasn't been rented out. Symposer, which makes sense seeing as it's deleted. And then security body control module came back with one code. Alarm module missing? Missing messages. So at this point, those are the only two hard ones that came back right away. You'll have to drive and operate it from here and see what happens. Okay, cool, thanks. No problem. So what Ivan was talking about with the sound generator delete is right here. So from the factory, the car pipes in engine sound and that's what these tubes were for. I wasn't totally sure about that. And we have this guy that's just taped off. So this was connected to here and then these go actually into the cabin. There's little tubes that kind of go in there. You don't see them from the inside. And that is deleted on this car. All right, you McLaren guys out there, let me know if you like the sound of it deleted or not. What was the issue with keeping it? I don't know. Oh, is that the part? It's an intake sound generator off of a 720, just a tiny little throttle body that uh, opens up and allows that sound out. Oh, that's really cool. So did someone delete this or do you just happen to have it off right now? I've got a few motors. Up oh, yeah, so okay. <laughs> something that comes off makes it easier to uh, pull the intake manifold off. Okay. And uh, this is something you hate to see. This is out of a 675 LT and a rod decided to commit suicide basically and destroy the entire block. Look at this. Wow. At Cannonball Garage is like the only shop that can actually rebuild an engine. So Ivan was telling me that from McLaren, their fix is a brand new engine, which includes literally everything down to the AC compressor, the oil pans, the intake, and it's like $82,000.
Um, but here at Cannonball, they can actually recondition the rods and replace internal engine components. I mean, not, not on that block though. This block is gonna be a pretty cool coffee table for someone. Okay, so what you saw Ivan just do would cost 200 bucks. So for your McLaren, you would buy your clock spring for about 800 used plus 200. You got a thousand bucks to fix your airbag light and the pride and satisfaction of doing it yourself. Now in my particular situation, Arnie is a good friend, so I'm just paying him in legit street cars merch. That's it, yes, I accept merchandise. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks brother, I appreciate it. And we will be wow. back with the McLaren uh, for some dyno action in the very near future. Sounds good, we'll see you Thanks, soon. Thanks, brother. Look at this. I'm driving a McLaren with no service lights, uh, except for the tire pressure monitoring lights. Go away, go away. Everything I come up with now on the McLaren in my head is in a British accent for some yeah. reason. Like, and then say you're gonna wash the car. That's what we're gonna bloody do. This bloody sucks. You're not even mic'd up, Max, so no one can hear the crap that you're spewing right now. Don't care. <laughs>